Okay, let's have a look at building a quantity rate table. Uh, it's a useful table for uh, solving these these uh, quantity rate word problems. So, you know, these examples are going to be simple. Example 1 and example 2. Okay. Blend 100 kilograms of coffee A at $15 per kilogram with 200 kilograms of coffee B at $9 per kilogram. So we're going to set up a quantity rate table, not because we can't understand anything about this right now, but because when we get to uh, more difficult problems, we'll understand what all these numbers in the table mean. Okay, So we have two types of coffee, coffee A and coffee B. So, you know, coffee A from Nicaraguan, coffee B from um, Ghana in Africa, something like that. Okay, so here's coffee A, here's coffee B. Now, coffee A costs $15 per kilogram, and we're going to take 100 kilograms, so that's quantity, Q stands for quantity, by the way, sorry, quantity. R stands for rate, and this is quantity times rate, okay? So our quantity, of course, is in kilograms, okay? So uh, coffee A, 100 kilograms, and the rate is $15 per kilogram. So rate 15. So that's, um, you know, dollars per kilogram is our rate. And if I do this quantity times rate, I'll be doing 100 times 15. Okay, or, you know, 15 times 100, 100 times 15, which gives me 1,500. And this is in dollars, okay? Because um, 100 kilograms, uh, $15, $15 each per kilogram, that's $1,500 uh, total cost. Now, 200 kilograms of coffee B, the rate is $9 per kilogram. How much money would that cost? Well, you do this quantity times rate, that's 9 times 200, and we get $1,800. Okay? So, the first two rows should be easy enough to understand what all these numbers mean. Now, we always, with these quantity rate tables, we always do another row, and this is the blend, or when we add them together, when we blend or, or, or mix or add the two items together, okay? And so we do this 100 plus 200 goes here. So if we mix these two coffees together, we'll have 300 kilograms total, correct? Now, Adding 15 plus 9 to get 24 doesn't make any sense at all, okay? Because this is the rate column. We'll come back to that. But adding these two together does make sense. 1,500 is the cost of coffee A. 1,800 cost of coffee B. When you add them, you get $3,300, don't you? And that does make sense because the 3,300 represents the total cost. Okay? Now, the rate... We, we're going to come back to it. So this is the blend row, and we're done. This is just going to have three rows. You're going to have nine numbers all together. We need to understand each one. And the um, the blend rate, if you do this, um, total cost divided by the total weight, okay, which is 3,300 over 300, Put that in your calculator. So this divided by this, you should get 11. Okay, and this is the um, total cost of total weight. This is the cost of mix per kilogram. Okay, so or the rate of the mix, which is 11 dollars. So 11 dollars per kilogram for the mix, right? Now, example two: build a quantity rate table. For this, we're going to invest $2,000 at 12% interest in stocks, then invest $10,000 at 4% interest in the bank. Okay, so quantity rate table, we just do this first, build it. Okay, we need nine numbers, uh, three rows of three, and we're going to invest some money in stocks, some money in a bank. And then we're going to look at our total investment. Okay. So the quantity, the Q, the quantity in this case would be dollars, right? And we're investing <clears throat> in stocks two thousand dollars. 
the rate is 12%. Now we know by now 12% is 12 per 100 or uh, 0.12. So the rate is 12%, 0.12. Always put it in decimal form so that we can work with it. We can multiply it and stuff. So the rate is the um, interest rate. So the rate represents interest rate in this example. Whereas in the other example, the rate was the dollars per kilogram. Remember that? And um, quantity times rate, what does that mean? If I multiply this by this, that's, you know, 0 0.12 times 2,000. This is 12% of 2,000, which gives us um, $240. Now, my question to you is, what does that represent, the $240? Do you understand what that represents? It's the interest amount, isn't it? In dollars. Okay, so this is dollars. This is the total amount invested. This is the interest amount. And this here is the interest rate. That's a percentage. Okay. Now, in the bank, we put $10,000. What's the interest rate? 4%. And we know by now 4% is 4 per 100. Put that in the calculator, you get 0 0.04. So write 4% as a decimal. And now the quantity times rate tells us we need to multiply 0 0.04 times 10,000. And that should give us $400. And you tell me what does that represent, the $400? Isn't it the amount of interest that you get from your investment in the bank. Okay, so this is in dollars. Now, the most interesting row is the one we need to understand. It's the bottom row, and this is when we add, mix, or blend things together. So, you know, we're going to add everything together, or get the total or the combined investment. Okay. Um, so if we look at if we if we put these investments together and look at the um, look at what we have for the entire for for the whole year, we invested two thousand in stocks plus ten thousand in the bank. So the total invested was twelve thousand, right? Then we come to the rate column. Adding twelve percent plus four percent gives us sixteen percent interest. That sixteen percent means nothing. It, you cannot add these together to make get anything that makes any sense. So you don't add these. So, so you add these numbers to get that, and then you add these numbers to get 640. Now, what does that represent? Well, 240 represented what? The interest amount from the stocks. 400 represented the interest amount from the bank. So 640 is the total amount of interest that we got at the end of the year from the combined investments. Okay. Now the question is, how do we put this number in? Well, we take our total um, interest, divide that by the total investment, and we'll get our average interest rate for the year. Average interest rate for the year. Okay, so we put in six. So it's um, six hundred and forty over twelve thousand. Put that that in the calculator and see what you get, and turn it into a per. You know, or think of that as as a percentage in any case. So 0 0.5333333, 0 0.5333, and so on, which, oh, sorry, 0 0.05, whoops, my mistake, um, 0 0.0, 0 0.05333, which, as you know, if you move the decimal point one, two spaces over, that is um, exactly five and one third percent, or, you know, as a decimal, it's, you know, approximately 0 0.0. Sorry, 0 0.0533, let's say. Okay?
So this is the average. This is the this here is the average interest rate for the year. Okay. Now, what you got to notice about this number? It's closer to four percent than twelve percent. Why is that? We invested more money in the bank or the stocks. We invested more money in the bank. Therefore, our average interest rate should be closer to 4%. And it is. It's a little over 5%. Agreed? And obviously, um, if you added these together to get 0.16, 16% would not be the average interest rate. Okay? The average interest rate needs to be between these two numbers. Right? Obviously. And uh, just quickly going back to this example, we invent we bl which we blended two amounts of coffee, 100 kilograms coffee A, 200 kilograms coffee B. Um, which is more? More we blended in more of, of coffee B, and the price per kilogram of the blend is closer to the price per kilogram of coffee B because there's more of coffee B blended it, right?